Would you like the ability to access your NetN instance from anywhere? Of course you do. In the previous video, we had a look at setting up N8N to run on our local machines, which is perfect for small, personal projects and for following YouTube tutorials like this one. But before we continue with the series, I do want to show you how to deploy N8N to the cloud. This will also allow external applications to trigger events within N8N, such as automating workflows when you receive an email, while you could opt in for N8N's cloud service service at around 20 euros per month, I'll show you how to self-host it for free. And if you need more robust features, you can upgrade your plan for about $7 a month, which is still cheaper than the cloud service. And I think it's actually an excellent deal, especially if you're doing this for clients or to boost your own productivity. So let's get started. Now, before I show you which process I personally use to deploy N8N, I quickly want to show you the N8N documentation. So from the N8N website, we can go to docs, and self-host N8N. And on the left-hand side, under installation, we can view the different server setups documented by N8N. But in this video, I'm actually going to use a provider that is not listed here, which in my opinion is one of the easiest ways to deploy N8N. For this, we will use render.com. So go over to render.com and click on get started. Simply create a new account or sign in with one of these providers. After signing in, you should be presented with a dashboard similar to this. If you see a different dashboard, then simply click on new, then web service. Now, the first thing we need to do is to connect to a GitHub account. GitHub is simply a repository that contains the N8N code. So we will connect to the N8N repository and pull the code into render. Go to github.com, then click on sign up, then enter your email address, click on continue, then create a password, click on continue and enter a username. Let's click continue again. And finally, let's click continue. Now we are logged into GitHub. In the search bar, enter N8N and the N8N repo should be the first one showing up in the results. Let's click on the N8N repo and without getting into too much detail, this repo actually contains the source code for N8N. But we're not going to touch the code, so please don't worry about it. But what we want to do is to make a copy of the code into our own namespace so that we can deploy it to render. That's super easy to do. Look for the fork option on this page and then click on create a new fork. On this screen, we can leave everything on the default values. Let's simply click on create fork. And after a few seconds, we will now have our very own copy of N8N. Now that we have GitHub and our N8N repo set up, we can go back to render. Then let's click on GitHub to connect our account. On this pop-up, I'll simply authorize render. I'll leave all repositories selected and let's click on install. Excellent, we can now see the N8N repo in our own namespace. So all we have to do is select this option and click on connect. But before I do that, I just quickly want to explain why I didn't use the public git repository option. So in theory, we could have skipped the forking step altogether and simply copy the URL to the N8N repo and pasted it into this field. This would work, but it does introduce a whole bunch of other issues, especially when it comes to keeping the N8N instance up to date. And we will have a look at keeping our instance up to date later on in this video. So I'm not going to use this option. So let's go back to Git provider. Let's select the N8N instance in our namespace and let's click on connect. From this screen, we can give our project a name I'll just leave it as N8N. We'll leave the language as node and the branch as master. You can also change the region if you want, but I'll simply stick with the default. We can actually leave all of these fields on their default values and under instance type, let's select the free plan. Now, I do recommend using a starter plan instead, which does cost $7 a month. But if you simply wanted to follow along with this tutorial for free, then the free tier will be perfectly fine. The downside with the free tier is that it does spin down after some inactivity, which simply means that if you haven't used your instance in a while, it could take a few seconds to start back up. 
Also, if the server had to be restarted, you will lose all of your workflows as the data will not be persisted. So for now, we'll select the free tier, but do stick around as I will show you later on in this video how to convert your plan to the starter plan and retain your workflows going forward. So let's scroll down. We'll leave the environment variables blank, but we will add a few environment variables once we upgrade to the paid plan. Let's simply click on deploy web service. Render is now busy building our project and this will take a few minutes to complete. After a few minutes, the build is complete and we can see that the status changed to live. We can now access N8N by clicking on this URL over here. Just like with the local setup, we can now set up our owner account. So go ahead and enter your email, first name, last name and a password. On the next screen, you can fill out this form if you want to, or simply click on Get Started. And you can now access N8N from anywhere using this URL. Also, you can customize this URL by going to Render and Settings, and under Custom Domains, you can go ahead and register and set up a custom domain. How cool is that? Now, let me show you one limitation of using the free package on Render. And this is true for many of the other service providers as well, by the way. The free tiers do not persist the data that you create. So let's look at an example. I'll just create a new flow and let's give it a name. I'll just call this one demo. Let's press enter to change the name and let's go back to the dashboard. We can now see that flow show up over here. But watch what happens if I restart the server in render. So for this instance, let's go to manual deploy and I'm going to restart the service. A service restart can happen for many different reasons. These servers might be restarted due to scheduled maintenance, or your service could also be restarted when you update your N8N instance. Now watch what happens after we've restarted the service. If we go back to N8N, we are again prompted with this form to create our account. So I'm going to enter all of this information again. Let's close this pop-up and unfortunately our workflow is gone. So the free plan is perfectly fine for following along with this tutorial series and for learning N8N. But if you are serious about improving your productivity using N8N, then I highly recommend upgrading to the paid account. Now let's have a look at upgrading our render account. And afterwards, I'll show you how to keep your N8N instance up to date. So back in render, you should see this button to upgrade your instance. Let's click on that now. So the first thing we need to do is to add a credit card to our plan, which I'll do now. Then let's select the starter plan and let's click on save changes. Our instance is now being upgraded to the starter plan and the status changed to deploying. And while this is deploying, I do want to ask you a favor. Please hit the like button to tell the YouTube algorithm that this video was indeed helpful. And if you would like to see more N8N content, then please subscribe to my channel. Now that our instance has been upgraded, let's click on the service name and we should now see that we are on the starter package. Let's go to disks, then let's click on add disk and for the mount path, enter slash opt slash render slash dot n8n. For the storage size, let's select one gigabytes and let's click on add disk. Now, all we have to do is add a few environment variables. Let's go to environment and under environment variables, let's click on add environment variable and let's enter n8n underscore editor underscore base underscore URL. And this contains the URL to our N8N instance, which we can simply copy from over here and paste it into this field. Then we need to add four more environment variables. The next one is N8N host, and this is also the link to N8N, but without the HTTPS part of it like so. Then let's also add N8N underscore port with a value of 443, Let's add another environment variable called n8n protocol with a value of HTTPS and one more environment variable. This is the last one, I promise. This one is called n8n underscore user underscore folder. And this is the same value that we gave to the disk that we created earlier, which was slash opt slash render 
slash dot n8n. Let's click on save changes and deploy. And now you will not lose your workflows whenever the service is restarted. Now, finally, let me show you how to keep your n8n instance up to date. To demo this, I'll actually show you the n8n instance that I use for my personal projects. So if I have a look at the N8N repo, which I forked to my own account, I can see that there were five changes made since I last forked or updated my fork. So if I wanted to pull in all these latest changes, all I have to do is click on sync fork and update branch. If I switch back to render, you will now notice that the status of my N8N instance have changed to deploying. And once this is done, my N8N instance will be up to date. The render instance will only be updated if I sync my GitHub repo. So I can decide when these updates should be pushed. Ideally, not at a critical time where I'm expecting my N8N instance to be up and running. Because during this deploying or build phase, your N8N instance will go down and any processes relying on N8N to be up will be unavailable. That is also why I decided not to use this public Git repository option, which points to the main N8N repo. Since the N8N repo is updated multiple times in a single day, it would mean that your render instance would also be updated multiple times a day as well causing unpredictable and multiple downtimes during the day. So I highly recommend creating a fork of N8N and deciding yourself when the ideal time is to sync the repo. Now that we're able to access N8N, whether locally or in the cloud, we're finally ready to learn how to build workflows.